have previously learned that the atomic weight of oxygen is 16 and that the molecule of oxygen gas is diatomic and therefore has a weight of 32. You've also learned that 32 grams of oxygen, the gram molecular weight, or one mole, occupies a volume of 22 and 4 tenths liters at standard conditions. The purpose of the experiment today is to verify this statement that one mole of oxygen gas at standard conditions occupies a volume of 22 and 4 tenths liters. Now in order to verify this statement, we need to develop a method for measuring the weight and volume and pressure and temperature of a sample of oxygen. And if these four quantities are known, using the gas laws, we can calculate the weight of a sample of oxygen at any other temperature and pressure that we choose. In this test tube, we've placed a mixture of potassium chlorate and manganese dioxide. The grayish color of the material is due to the manganese dioxide. We'll determine the weight of this tube and its contents, and then heat it with the Bunsen burner. Oxygen will be produced and will be driven through this tube, which opens here into the flask. As oxygen enters the flask, the water now in the flask will be displaced over through this tube into the beaker. By measuring the volume of the water eventually collected in the beaker, we can determine the volume of oxygen produced. By weighing the tube before and after heating, we can determine the weight of the oxygen produced. We can measure the pressure using a barometer, and we can measure the temperature of the oxygen in this vessel by measuring the temperature of the water which is driven from the vessel. And with these four quantities, we can proceed to calculate the weight of 22 and 4 tenths liters of oxygen. Our first job, then, is accurately to determine the weight of this tube and its contents. Note that we don't have to determine the weight of the empty tube, because we really don't care how much potassium chlorate and manganese dioxide we've added. We simply need to determine the weight of the tube and its contents before heating, and the weight of the tube and the residue after heating. The difference in weight will be the weight of oxygen driven off. We've placed the test tube and its contents on the left-hand pan of the balance. And we've balanced the weight of the tube by adding weight to the right-hand pan, by placing a rider on the beam, and by using the chain. On the right-hand pan of the balance, we've placed four rather large weights. The large weight in bag is a 30-gram weight. Then starting from the left in front, the weight most on the left is a 10-gram weight. The middle weight in front is a 5 gram weight, and the small weight on the right in front is a 3 gram weight. The combined total of these four weights is 48 grams. On the beam at the top of the balance, we've placed the rider at the 0.5 gram mark. This means that we've added one half gram uh, to the weights by means of the rider. The final adjustment is made by adding a, a small portion of a chain to the weights already placed in the balance. And the amount of chain added is read from this scale. These figures represent thousandths of a gram. So that we see here we've added 56 and a half, or 565 five thousandths of a gram with the chain. And by combining all of these weights, the large weights in the pan, the rider, and the chain, we determine the weight of the tube and its contents before heating to be 48.5565 grams. First, uh, I blew gently in this tube so that some water was forced out of the flask through this tube, which is now completely filled with water. And I attached the test tube firmly to this stopper. And our next job is to equate the pressures inside and outside the flask. This we do by raising the small beaker until the level of the water in the small beaker is the same as the level of the water in the flask. And then opening the pinch clamp, we permit water to flow uh, one way or the other until the pressures are equal. 
Then we replace the bench clamp, remove the small beaker, replace it with the large beaker, and open the pinch clamp. A few drops of water run from the tube and then stop. This indicates that we have no leaks in our system. We will now light the Bunsen burner and heat the potassium chlorate in the test tube. We're now heating the chlorate mixture in the test tube. Oxygen is being formed here, passing through this tube. Water is being forced out of the flask and is dripping slowly into the beaker. We will continue this operation until approximately three quarters of the water in the flask has been driven into the beaker. We've now heated the test tube until nearly all of the water has been forced from the flask and is now in the beaker. At this point, we must uh, discontinue heating and permit the test tube and its contents to cool to room temperature so that any expansion of the air in the tube, which occurred at the beginning of the experiment, will be counteracted by corresponding cooling of this air uh, after we discontinue the heating. Being careful to keep the tip of this tube under the surface of the water, we've now lowered the beaker until the level of the water in the beaker and in the flask are equal. In the meantime, the test tube is cooled to room temperature. We now know that the pressure inside the beaker is atmospheric pressure, since the level of the water inside and outside is the same. We'll now replace the pinch clamp and proceed to measure the volume of the water in the beaker. First, we will uh, measure the temperature of the water in the beaker. We find it to be 29 degrees centigrade. Then we'll carefully pour the water in the beaker into this large graduated cylinder. We find the volume of the water to be 980 milliliters. After the tube has cooled to room temperature, we've replaced it in the balance and again determined its weight. The tube and the residue after heating now weigh 47.3848 grams. The data that we've accumulated during this experiment is now on the board. The weight of the test tube before heating was 48.5565 grams, and after heating, 47.3848 grams. The difference is 1.1717 grams and equals the weight of the oxygen produced. This oxygen displaced a volume of water equal to 980 milliliters. The temperature of this water was 29 degrees centigrade, or 302 degrees absolute, and this must also have been the temperature of the oxygen in the flask. Atmospheric pressure today is 729 millimeters. The vapor pressure of water at 29 degrees is 30 millimeters. And since the combined pressure of the oxygen and the water vapor in the flask equal atmospheric pressure, or 729, and we know that the water vapor pressure was 30. The oxygen vapor pressure must be the difference. Partial pressure of oxygen in the flask then was 699 millimeters. And we will use many of these figures in carrying out a calculation of the weight there are 22 and 4 tenths liters of oxygen at standard conditions. First, we must calculate the volume that this oxygen would have occupied at standard conditions. We had 980 milliliters of oxygen, or 0.980 liters. We found that the pressure exerted by this oxygen was 699 millimeters of mercury. We need to correct this to 760. And we found that the temperature of this oxygen was 302 degrees absolute, and we need to correct this to 273. Carrying out this computation, we find that the corrected, or STP, volume of the oxygen 
is 0.815 liters. Now, we know that this oxygen weighed 1.1717 grams and occupied a volume of 0.815 liters. And we want to know how much oxygen, what weight of oxygen, would occupy a volume of 22 and 4 tenths liters. And solving this expression for x, we find that x equals 32.2 grams. Now this compares with our accepted value of 32 grams of oxygen quite well. Our error then is some two tenths of a gram. Percentage wise, our error is 0.2 times 100 over 32 or 0.6 percent, six tenths of one percent. It's possible then using this method to calculate rather accurately the molecular weight of oxygen.